What, what can I say about this? This is absolutely stunning. To me, it feels over-processed. And the biggest giveaway, little things we can do to help tighten it up a little bit. Gang, what is up? Having your photos reviewed by another photographer is, in my opinion, the best way to improve your photography. Because being able to get an informed opinion from someone who cares about the craft, who is another photographer, they're going to be able to give you very different feedback and information to help you improve as a photographer versus just sharing your images with people who love you for who you are. Your friends, your family, your followers, everyone's gonna be positive. And it's important to be able to be able to critique our own work to help us improve as a creator. And so I thought this would be a fun opportunity to review photos that you guys have very kindly sent over to try and give as much constructive feedback as possible to help every single person who's watching this video to improve as a photographer. And I wanna preface this with obviously everything I say is going to be influenced by my style, my influences and my aspirations. However, the more of these individual critiques in this video that you watch, you are going to start to understand the framework in which I use to evaluate other people's photos, which I use to evaluate my photos, which you can use to evaluate your own photos. And having said this, I want you to look at every image, to really study it and to think, okay, what, what do I think of this image? Do I agree with JP or do I disagree with JP? And if so, why or why not? Doing so is going to help us all think more critically about photography to improve our own photos. Thank you so much to everyone who has shared their images. It's, it's actually quite a brave thing to do, to share a photo that you're quite proud of with someone on the internet to openly critique it and to put it back onto the internet. So I appreciate each and every one of you for, yeah, having the bravery and the vulnerability to, to share that with me. So thank you. As we're trying to build the most helpful, facilitative, fruitful community in the photography space on YouTube, comment below your thoughts help each other, let's have discussions about these images. I've briefly looked at all of the different images because obviously I had to download them and stick them onto my iPad, but I wanna try to give the most raw emotional experience when I look at each of the individual photos because that is going to help inform how most people, or how some people, are going to be looking at your photos for the first time. And at the end of this, I'm going to share my top three images um, because yeah, I thought that would also be fun. So, let's get into it. Alright, so we are kicking it off with this photo from Bjorn and I really like it. I think this is a good photo. We've got, it's clearly at some sort of carnival. We've got the main subject, which is the brightest element really in this frame. Um, there's a the highest level of contrast between them, their shirt and this dark background. We can clearly see that it's some sort of game that's going on that someone has just played and so the game's being reset. We've got all these people who look quite young, uh, all these kids, I guess, um, here having fun. They've got this beautiful edge light that is obviously coming from the stool itself. And yeah, I just think it's a really, really nice photo. It tells quite a nice, interesting story. And so immediately, my eye, and I'm sure everyone else's eye, is drawn here, which is fantastic. That is the subject, right? But I feel like there's a lot of opportunity in the frame, how it's currently cropped, for the eye to escape. And so what I mean by that is we've got all of this dead space around here. And when I say dead space, I'm talking about parts of the frame that aren't adding any additional useful information to either set the scene or to tell the story in a better way. So we've got this dark space down the bottom. We can't really see any detail in there. So I would get rid of that. We've got all this dark space up top here. I'd also chop that down. We don't need as much there. Um, and it's similar down here. We don't need to see this information. If anything, that is distracting us. And the more dead space you have in a photo, the more opportunities you have for your eye to just wander off and be like, yeah, I've looked at everything. It's, it's time to move on. So what I would do to improve this photo is I would crop in to about something like this. Because by doing so, we're then able to let me see if I can get this right. Here we go. And so by cropping in like this, we're able to tell the, the exact same story, but just have more emphasis. We're able to see more detail. We're able to see this person resetting. We're able to still see all of these people down the front who are looking at the game, who are engaged by the game, who are interested in the game. We can now see more clearly all of these toys. We've got all these interesting lights up here. 
And I feel like this frame communicates the same thing, just in a more clear and aesthetic way. So Bjorn, thank you so much for sending that in. Um, good job. All right, now we're on to the second image, which is an image by Shots by Donovan. And again, I really like it. I think that this is an interesting image. There's lots going on and there's little things we can do to help tighten it up a little bit. And so to me, in this frame, it looks like we're on some sort of tram or railway because you've got these tracks going off into the distance. Um, you've got these four individuals around the, around the edge. And we've also got this really cool reflection up top here, which is giving us a slightly different perspective on this image. And so to me, this image, it looks like this guy and this scene is the subject. And so we could do a similar thing to what we did previously, where we zoom in and we're able to get a really interesting perspective. We're able to see, obviously, this, this guy. Um, you see his phone. We're able to get the perspective of him looking at his phone. Then we've got these leading lines leading off into the distance. Then you've got more subjects down there. And this sort of recomposition um, it's interesting because you've got these three shoulders which also are mimicking the shape of the seat and that kind of makes you, it pushes your eye away from this towards this guy and we've got this natural frame here and all of that feels really nice and interesting. And so that's what I would do if I was to like re-crop this image but I don't know, there's lots of things here that we could do in camera to improve the photo. So we've got this woman here who is showing who's, who's yawning. And that, that's always quite funny because every time people yawn, you can, you can never look pretty when you yawn. Um, and it could be that if we turned the frame or the camera very slightly, we could cut off this woman down here and we could still get a very similar frame apart from we have this woman yawning more as a front and centre. And we also have, instead of a very symmetrical down the middle lines down here, we can get these lines going off to the right, which is more diagonal, and hopefully creates more, I don't know, more depth, more lines through the image, which is obviously interesting. Another idea could be to play more with this reflection. I think that it's, it's slightly cut off at the top, and I think that if we were to move slightly further into the frame and tilt the camera up slightly more, we would be able to get a bigger reflection, which could, could be cool, it could be a gimmick, but it's always worth trying to experiment with them. So I think that, yeah, again, this is another interesting photo where getting slightly closer in would help bump it up and make it an even more interesting photo. So Donovan, thank you very much. If you're enjoying this video so far, I would absolutely love a like, a comment, and for you to share this video, to share it with someone who you think would find this video valuable, because we are trying to build the, the biggest and the best community that all support each other, that help each other become better photographers. That's the goal, that's the vision. If you want to be a part of it, then uh, yeah, get involved. Gags, we are now going more streeted with this image by, by Stu H. And it's a, it's, a good, it's a good start. I think that for me, when I look at this, I'm like, okay, this woman is clearly the main subject. Oh, this woman is clearly the main subject. And we've got little bits of interesting light kind of cutting across from this bus, across her face, across her shirt. We've got a nice gradient going on here. Um, and we've also got, I think, because I know Royal Horse Guards, we've got this guard who's up here sitting on some beautifully well-groomed pony. But when I look at this photo, I'm not entirely sure what this image is trying to tell me. And so is it a, a capture that is trying to see what the world is like in 2022? So in 50 years time, we look back at this photo and go, wow, that's what 22 was like. In which case, we can't really see anything other than this woman. And so, for that reason, I'm going to presume that this photo is pretty much just about this woman, okay? And so, to me, I feel like this crop doesn't help communicate that. It doesn't help draw your eye to the subject. And so, what I would do is I would go for a crop that's a bit more like this. And so I've rubbed out the size to hopefully make this even more clear as to what I'm saying. But in my eyes, this is the most interesting part of the image. And I may be wrong, but this is kind of what my eye is drawn to and what I think you're trying to achieve here. And so, to me, this sort of crop 
suits this subject better. Because now that it's a vertical frame, we are now looking up and down the frame. We're able to see the pattern of her, her three buttons. We're able to see the gradient that's coming up here and it's drawing us towards her face, which is the thing that our eyes are naturally most drawn to, those human faces. Hence why we see faces on like bins and stuff. And this also then starts to show us more that there's a gradient that's going on here. So she's clearly moving out of the shadow or she's walking along with shadow on one shoulder. And this just starts really creating an interest in her and the light that's on her. And I think that that would really take this photo to another level to make this photo even more interesting. However, some people really hate cropping and think that it's blasphemy. Um, so take what I say with a pinch of salt. On to the next one. An absolutely stunning landscape was sent in by one of my good friends, a guy called Henry Thwaite. And what, what, what can I say about this? This is absolutely stunning. Um, don't actually know where it is. Um, maybe the Dolomites. I feel like every mountain range looks kind of pointy. I'm like, Dolomites, but I have no idea. Um, so this is so interesting. Obviously, we've got this beautiful line of mountains in the background. We've got all of these sweeping, I'm sure there's some sort of um, formal name for them, but I'm going to call them almost like little landslide evidence things. Um, and then you've got this teeny tiny subject hiding down here. I think that might be his girlfriend. Um, I hope it's his girlfriend. Um, that's down there on this beautiful little patch of um, rock that is being illuminated from the right hand side. This is absolutely stunning. I absolutely love it. And so this is, and so this is me really clutching at straws now to try and um, say something that's useful. Um, to me, Perhaps this down here is a little bit crushed and you can see that it starts to look a little bit flat in the shadows. This is more of like a painting thing that I try and emulate in my own work and I'm literally copy and pasting what I'm saying from my best friend Dan who was in the Amsterdam video. Um, the, there's atmospheric perspective. So everything in the distance is less contrasty and slightly bluer than anything that's in the foreground. And so what I would do to create even more depth is to maybe add some sort of radial filter here and drop the contrast ever so slightly. And then I'd probably put a radial filter around here and then I would increase the contrast and I'd also drop the blacks very slightly so they're slightly darker. And that way you're going to create even more depth in your image to make it seem like his girlfriend is absolutely miles away from this beautiful stack of mountains in the distance. But like I said, that is absolutely clutching at straws to try and say something because this is absolutely beautiful. So <laughs> thank you very much for sending it in, dude. Appreciate it. Again, if you have any thoughts on what I've said so far, if you agree with what I'm saying, if you disagree with what I'm saying, Comment them down below. I want to hear your opinion. Again, we're trying to build the biggest, best community and get involved, be a part of it, and uh, yeah, share the love. So this photo is sent in by Glenn Barnett, who is another fantastic photographer. And I really like this. I think that it's, I mean, I'm clearly partial to black and whites. Um, we've got, obviously, a building here, which has got interesting roof patterns and structures. Uh, we've got windows here, we've got nice roofs up here, a little building down here, nice kind of lines with a single point perspective that's going off into the distance down here. And so I like this image, I love the tones, I love the textures, and I think that it's a really nice edit on this. But when I look at this photo, I'm not entirely sure what you're trying to get me, the viewer, to be looking at. And I think that's an important consideration because it's like, okay, let's say you want me to look at this. I think that the angle that we're at means that we're seeing too much of this side, which is the, the dark side, which is the side that perhaps isn't as interesting as the front side. But we're not seeing enough of the front side 
to really be able to understand what it's like. And so in my eyes, I think that the easiest way that we can improve this photo is to take a few steps round to the side. Because that way we're still going to be able to see the interesting light that's hitting here, that's creating this gradient down here. But we're able to see even more of the front of the building, which is then going to make us... We're going to have more visual information to process, to think about, and to appreciate why this building is interesting, while still having that interesting light. And obviously there's a rail that's going around here, and it may be that you literally couldn't get any further round to the left. Um, and so that's when you start getting risky and you're holding your camera, camera out here. But I think that just a couple of steps would really open up the front of the building, which would then give the viewer something to really chew on when they look at this photo. I also think that if we took another step to the side, we'd be able to see all of this building, which would then make everything in this frame feel really deliberate. Again, absolutely love the grading. I love the image, there's a lot of potential there. But if I was to do anything, I would take a couple steps to the side. I think that would take it to the next level. So thank you very much, Glenn. All right, so we're now on to this image by Jacob. And this is a more kind of, not necessarily stricter street, but this is a more, um, and it, capturing an event, capturing an emotion, something happened. And this, this is really difficult to shoot well and to shoot in a compositionally strong way because you only have one shot and you don't know what's happening and things are moving. Um, and yeah, I think that you, it's hard to nail first time, right? And I think that these sort of photos, the more you do them, the better you get at them. And so when I look at this frame, I, I'm not entirely sure what has happened. Um, I presume that maybe there was a bubble there um, because it looks like there's maybe little explosions. Um, I think, yeah, there's these like little particles around the place. So I presume that there was something here that has then been part. Um, and yeah, I, I like that you can see that they're both looking into this kind of now empty spot. And that gives us a bit of kind of, makes us think more in terms of like the time frame. Makes us start thinking, oh, wonder what happened just before, which is good. Apart from, I don't think that we can really tell from like an instant glance what's happened. And maybe that's the style you're going for. Maybe you want people to really look at your photos to really think about the photos a bit more. But I think there's a lot of room for the eye to escape, which then means that people aren't necessarily going to hang around and look at this photo long enough to think, oh, I think that there was a bubble there and so on and so on. So we've got all of this dead space around here. These feet aren't really adding anything to the photo. Um, and I think it'd be more interesting if the camera was tilted downwards. So we're really able to see what's going on with this fella down here. And I think that that's, that's kind of the only advice I'd had for something like this is to probably bring the camera back towards you and then to tilt it down very slightly. And so by doing that, you're able to get a slightly wider field of view. Um, and by tilting, by, by moving it back, sorry, and then by tilting the camera downwards slightly more, you'll be able to get more of this dude. And maybe there could be some other bubbles in there. So that is what I would do. It's a very hard photo to capture. Um, but yeah, keep going, my man. Okay, so we are now onto this photo by Jake Miles, and I really like it. It's clearly a uh, um, shot of motorbike racing, um, and I think it's at Brands Hatch, he mentioned, which is a really cool racetrack in, Lon in, not London, in the UK. And we can clearly see, this is a subject. This is the interesting thing. This is what our eyes are drawn to. Both of them are popping wheelies, probably absolutely pinging it, pinging it along, and yeah, I absolutely love that. That's so interesting to see, right? But one of the challenges that we have at racetracks is that the background is typically not very aesthetic. There's often lots of branding, lots of sponsors, and there's also lots of like safety kit, which is obviously great that it's there, but it isn't great for photos. And so in this example, 
we've got this up here, we've got the ambulance, we've got barriers, we've got more barriers around there, and I don't know, I feel like it slightly detracts from this scene, the thing we want to look at. And so again, I think that a tighter crop is going to really, is going to really benefit this photo. So we could crop in, maybe we could do a landscape crop, or something more like that, where you're really getting the dynamicness of uh, the motorbikes, because they're going off into this side, they're going off to the right, so maybe a crop from here into there, then makes the bikes feel like they're going into the space, which is cool. And I think you could probably do with a, a gradient filter coming in from the left, going right, and just dropping the exposure. This is a technique that pretty much every single motorsport photographer does because it just adds a bit more depth and a bit more oomph to the photo and it really draws the eye to the subject. So think about great graduated filters, I think that's what they're called. Maybe try one from the bottom up as well and just really bring the exposure right down because that is going to draw the eye to the subject. Alternatively, a different crop that we could do is, let me undo is maybe a slightly tighter one, something something like that. That could be really cool because then you're really isolating just the action. Um, you've got this short line, you've got this line that's coming through the frame, you've got these bikes going off into the distance, you've got most of the shadows, and that would also look really interesting. So I think, dude, keep going. You've definitely got potential and yeah. Think about how to really focus on the subject, the thing you want people to look at and how you can emphasize that in your photo and your photos will be transformed. So thank you very much for submitting it, dude. All right, so we've now got this image by Reyes and I like it. I think that you've got, you've got an interesting subject, which I presume is this building. There's a lot of character in this building, right? You've got the interesting brickwork going on, you've got obviously the white brick, the red brick, you can see that it's like starting to age in certain places, and that, that to me is really interesting. You've also got this cool um, carrick right up there, maybe that was the property developer when this building was built all these years ago, and obviously anyone who knows me knows that I absolutely love cats, so there's cat in this, which I absolutely love. And when I look at this image, to me it feels over-processed. And the biggest giveaway in that, to me, it feels overprocessed. And the biggest giveaway in that is the front of this building here is unnaturally bright. And we can tell this because if you look off into the distance, we've got this building here and I guess the church as well, where you've got a similar left hand side of a building here. And then we've got the front of the building here, which is here. But in the distance, these two have these two sides have very nominal difference in their brightness, right? And so that would indicate that the light source is over here shooting this way because they're both essentially in the shade. Whereas here, this is definitely the brightest part of this building. And unless there's a huge skyscraper just off to the side that's reflecting loads of light, this wouldn't really happen. And so I think what I'm trying to say here is that it's important to be aware of the available light to shoot that. Because yes, in post-production, you can tweak it and you can brighten stuff and you can bring stuff up in a, in a raw file. That's absolutely possible. And I think that it's very difficult to, in post, to make something feel natural when you're really brightening something like this. Um, because there, there's just so much nuance, so many micro shadows that your you have to like recreate and very 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 skilled um comp composite people people that blend photos together they can just about do it but there's always something that doesn't quite feel right and i feel like it's important to when you're shooting especially street photography it's important to shoot the light that's available to you and i appreciate that this is clearly after the sun has set light is dropping, you found, an interesting, you found an interesting subject that you want to capture, and that's great. Perhaps it would be better to shoot it on a tripod, where you're then able to bring up the whole exposure and you're not, have, not having to worry about 
dropping a shutter speed so low um, that you get camera shake. But yeah, I think that that is my takeaway. I mean, it's an interesting subject and you've done well capturing it. But yeah, I think that my comment would be try and be more aware of the available light that's existing and then learning to see that and then shooting that because that way your photos are going to feel natural and they're going to feel more relatable rather than feeling too pushed and pulled in post. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, feel free to comment below as to whether you agree with what I've said. Um, and yeah, on to the next. Cool, so we've now got this absolutely gorgeous photo from Alex here. And I really like it. I, I think that this is one of those images that you look at and you're like, I wish I was there right now. It's so peaceful, it's so tranquil, there's a lot of continuity between the emotions felt when looking at this space. And there's also, like, all of these trees, I mean, that's a three, that's probably a third, maybe a big third, but it's like a, it feels very balanced, it feels very nice, the colours are very consistent, oh, it feels so Fuji, doesn't it? It is beautiful. The, the clouds, I think clouds are very underrated in most people's photos. Clouds, I think, add something to the scene. They, they don't, often it's not something like super specific, but it's enough to make you think that, ah, oh, this, is, this is actually interesting, what's going up in the sky. But it pushes your eye down into the frame. And so, again, absolutely love this. I personally think, that if there was something here to really capture a story, uh, something emotional, something that's really relatable, that would take this level to this photo to the next level. That's so what I mean by that. Is everything feels very peaceful, and once you once your eyes like skimmed around, you're like, cool, I get it. It is beautiful. I wish I was there. But how could you make someone like really think about this image? thinking about what happened before, thinking about what happened after, thinking about what's specifically going on in this moment. And I appreciate from this standpoint, it's hard. And you've done a good job here by using all these different elements to push your eye into this space here. But that, that got me thinking, would it be cool if there was something going on here? Maybe it would be difficult with a person there um, because they're quite small. Maybe if someone was getting chased, um, maybe like kids playing rather than someone getting, someone getting chased. That would be interesting, right? Or perhaps there could be someone on a boat here. Um, that could be interesting. That tells more of the story. That makes you think, oh, I wish I was on that boat on that lake. Because at the moment, these individuals over here, they're not, they don't stand out enough for you to be like, oh, I wish I was that person. There's a few too many of them and perhaps a, a little bit too small. Um, a random thought I had was how could you create juxtaposition in this and so everything's peaceful everything's really nice let's say you had someone with one of those RC boats that absolutely pings it along the water that would be that would make this photo fantastic because there's something very abrasive something that's loud something that's like causing all of this very peaceful ripply water to then be really going for it that would take this photo to the next level because that creates juxtaposition, that creates interest. But I appreciate that there's probably no one with an RC boat on this lake. So that is just a random spiel from me. But yeah, I absolutely love this. But perhaps it's worth thinking about, okay, what story can I add to this to make someone think about this photo a bit more rather than just go in, that is beautiful. All right, this is from one of my good friends, Ed who I presume this is taken on his phone. Um, he loves phone photography and is, is great at it. So I really like this image. I, I mean, it's a very beautiful car, isn't it? Um, I think it's interesting because not many people photograph cars when it's raining. A lot of people like to make it like golden hour or I don't know, with the like cool lights and stuff. But to photograph a car in the rain, I think is is interesting. And so to me, the most interesting part of this frame, of this car, is these beautifully shaped lights, which are also complemented by this here. And that, I think, has been, has been well captured. But I find that symmetrical photos are... they're good, but I think that 
how can we elevate it to the next level? What is something we can do to really emphasize how interesting probably these are? And so I would get closer. I would probably move in and then I would go slightly off to the side. So then we're able to make these look more dynamic going through the frame. So instead of them being square like this, you can get them being more kind of lengthily through the frame. And I may, I may actually be very influenced by one of my favorite photographers, a guy called Samuel Elkins. He took a photo of, well, I'm not sure whether it was this Aston Martin, but it was an Aston Martin with this, and I can't stop thinking about that photo. It is gorgeous. Um, and so I think that that's probably clouding my judgment on this. Um, but yeah, I think that perhaps I would bring up the shadows very slightly because there's detail down here that is interesting, but we're not really able to see that much of it. So I think that it's important to, whenever you're taking a photo or editing a photo, to think about, okay, everything in my frame, I want people to be able to look at and to see something interesting. And how can I let the viewer do that? And so you don't want to have anything that's too dark in your frame. You don't have anything that's too light in your frame either. So it's like about trying to find that balance. And I think that as you've included the whole rear end of the car, I think we should try and see more of the rear end. Or you can be even more creative, which I think is definitely your style, and put on some like really heavy um, graduated filter that makes all of this really dark. Let me, let me see if I can do something. This is very rudimentary and I don't think quite represents what I want it to. But by having a really dark graduated filter, we're then able to push the eye really far up onto this bit here, which is the bit that we want the eye to look at. So other than that, I think this is a fantastic photo. Um, very happy that you sent this in. And uh, yeah, those are the small little tweaks that I'll do to this photo. So thank you very much, Ed. So we've got this beautiful scene from Mai Shua, um, and I, I really like it. I think that you've got the, the building blocks of a good photo here. We've got this scene. Obviously, it's very relatable. We've got a dog, which everyone loves. Everyone feels like there's a connection with them and dogs. And so this makes gives people something to latch onto, something for people to feel when they look at this image. Um, but there's a couple of things that I would have done in camera whilst I was there to help really improve this image. So number one is that I would have brought the camera from its current position slightly higher. And by doing that, what we would do is we would then get rid of this line that's going through the subject's head because it is slightly distracting. And with this person, you can see that it's like a really beautiful silhouette. You can see all of them because it's a dark subject on a light background, right? And so could we do that with all three subjects to make it feel like it was very deliberate in your choice of angle and choice of camera placement? Um, and I think that would just take it to the next level, right? Um, I think that as well, typically we like to have foreground, midground and backgrounds. But I think that in this frame, these foreground spindly looking um, plants I think detract a little bit from the simplicity and the silhouettes of this beautiful scene, right? And so by moving the camera higher, we're then going to bring all of these, um, all of this foliage down in the frame and to hopefully hide some more of it. Because yeah, I think that all these additional lines are detracting away from this, this moment, which is the thing that we're trying to capture, right? The other thing I think I would do is I'd probably probably expose this photo slightly brighter and then bring everything down in post. I I don't know whether this was shot in camera. I, I think it looks like it probably was some sort of JPEG or film recipe. Um, but yeah, I would shoot slightly brighter or darker and make a decision either way. Because at the moment, we're not really able to see much in the way of the detail in any of these subjects. And if we shot brighter, we'd be able to see the detail. Whereas if we went for, let me see if I can try and do this. Uh, maybe a bit too dramatic, but if we were able to 
make the silhouettes of this completely dark. We may not, actually, we may not be able to tell that it's a dog, but I think that it then creates... I don't know, we're not then thinking about the the detail that we can almost see. It then simplifies the photo. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe in this case, let's say, let's go back to it being a um, brighter, more exposed image rather than going darker. Because I think that that would help achieve more of what you want it to, to achieve. So again, beautiful foundations, couple of tweaks. Thank you very much for submitting it. All right, we've now got this image from Joey. Uh, please excuse how bright and dark it's getting in the background. The sun is coming in and out, making this slightly harder. But this image, I really like it. I think the, well, what is it? It's some woman in a shop who's on her phone. She's preoccupied with whatever's going on here. There's these two um, well-placed um, stuffed toys. And yeah, I think that this is, this is really interesting. I think that, well, the things that I like, I think that you've managed to get the light hitting her and especially from the phone hitting the front of her face, which then makes this, I don't know, it just illuminates her and we see her, right? But I think that what I would probably change is I'd either go for a tighter crop, maybe, <clears throat> something like that. Maybe something that actually includes the foot here. I think that could be quite interesting because at the moment we I feel like I'm a little bit distracted by some of the other elements in the background. So this is all really dark and then you've got this tag and that tag is just getting me a little bit and what it's, what it's doing is it's like visual interest is here and here. But the thing that's interesting that you actually want to look at is this bit here. So how can we emphasize that and keep the eye focused here? And I think that, yeah, a tighter crop is just going to, to do that because you're not losing any of the story because we're still able to tell that we're in a shop with lots of clearly very soft things to sell by getting in tighter. And all we're doing is we're making the subject fill a larger portion of the frame which is then showing the viewer that this is the thing that you want to be looking at. Um, but yeah, dude, great photo. Crop in slightly tighter. Don't be afraid to crop. And yeah, bang it. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're now on to this photo by Matt. Um, and it's of some beautiful looking coastline. And I, again, it looks like somewhere where I really want to be, which is the main aim of the photo, right? Um, there's obviously this this girl looking over this um, beautiful looking coastline. Yeah, can't can't quite get over it. It looks very like I don't know, like Jurassic Parky. Although Jurassic Park was in a park, but you know what I mean. Like looks like dinosaurs could have been here. Um, and yeah, I I really like it. I like how the subject is here, dark against a light background. So it means that your eye is drawn to the subject which is fantastic. But when I look at this photo, I'm wondering what what's the story? Is it as simple as there's a girl at the coast here? Um, I think that we could do more in terms of um, showing off the coastline because I think that that's what's really interesting here is that we've got these trees and behind the trees is the sea. You don't often see that. Trees are often associated with this bit, the woodland bit, but having them with the background of the sea, that's really interesting. So I wonder whether if we got closer um, and we were overlooking her shoulder, perhaps, seeing the this tree, but then also seeing more of the coastline, that is going to help tell a better story because then it's going to be, it's this girl at the coastline with these trees, which which is interesting. Whereas, yeah, I feel like it's too, we're slightly too far away from the action to feel a part of it. Um, and this this takes time to, to craft. I think that there's, it's very easy to take a photo from further away. And when you get in closer, it then, 
don't know, there's a bit more friction. And I think that it's something that you have to overcome as a photographer. I can't remember who said it, but there's a famous quote that's like, if your photos aren't interesting enough, you need to be closer. And I think that whilst this photo is still interesting, and I think it's a really interesting scene, it's like, how can we emphasise that? And I think getting closer is going to tell more of a story as to who this girl is, um, the fact that there's this tree that's then overlooking this coastline with these beautiful cliffs. Because, yeah, maybe in my eyes this is the most interesting part of the frame. Would I say so? Maybe zoom in. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that this is the most interesting part. Um, we can tell more about what the girl's wearing, about what her hair is doing. It clearly looks windy, clearly tell it's the coast. Um, blah, 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 blah. can tell that the wind is coming this way because her hair is going off to the side. And yeah, I think that, again, cropping in, getting tighter, that is going to transform your image and still tell the same story. So again, thank you very much, Matt. Lovely image. Keep it up. All right, so we've now got this image from Stefan and black and white, obviously, obviously bangs. Um, I really like the color grading. I think it's really nice. I think we've got, well, in the scene here, we've got, it looks like we're on some sort of country road, country path, maybe. Um, it looks like, looks like it's maybe rained recently um, because it's slightly more reflective here. It looks like up there, there's maybe a bit of uh, water flowing down but the sun's come out and it's creating this lovely patch of light coming towards here. It's glancing off this grass over here. We've got these trees here. Um, but yeah, to me, this reminds me of a photo that um, Roger Deakins took in his book. I think it's called Pathways. I'll check. Um, and it's beautiful. But I think that there needs to be a subject there. There needs to be one thing that is um, is there to really anchor you in. So there's three elements that um, a guy called Finn, Finn Beals from this book, um, he says so succinctly, is you want location, event, and character. So location, you've got it. So this beautiful spot. Character, there is no character. There is no subject that we are relating to. And therefore, there's no event happening. And I think that... In the Roger Deakins photo, there's some like little there's some little rabbit here running off into the distance, and that just just made the the made it become a little bit more of a story than just a beautiful scene. And I think that again, I really like this photo, but how can we take it to the next level? And adding a subject in here would be, be perfect. So lovely composition, just how can we take it to the next level? Thank you very much and uh, yeah, keep it up. Okay, so we've now got this image from Cal Calvera Photo and I really like it. I think that, I mean, look how cute that dog is. Absolutely wonderful. Um, I love how the light is glancing off his face, causing shadow. Maybe a girl, don't know why I said his. Um, I love this little patch of light and obviously the the polka dots are absolutely beautiful um, but to me when I look at this I'm this sort of stuff up here is losing me a little bit in the frame um, because you can't see any faces you can't see any emotion we've just got these two dudes walking off in that direction and this woman is looking off at them Maybe wondering what's up. Maybe maybe that's what the story is. Um, but I feel like there's too much emphasis on the beautiful dog for this part here to be a story. And I may be wrong. I may be looking at this completely differently to the way that you wanted it to be communicated or for what this image you were shooting it, trying to think about in the context of it and stuff. But I don't know. I, I think that if, if you went hard on the crop and did something like that. That is like a beautiful, actually maybe in here, that is a beautiful dog portrait. And you can see the detail on the eyes, you've got the collar, you've got the leading lines, you can see the 
musculature, you can see the intricacies of the fur. That is so interesting and I love that. That, that to me is the most interesting thing. And you probably could tell the theme of the video is a tighter crop. And maybe, maybe because I've been doing this repeatedly, that's all I'm thinking of. But that is personally what draws my eye, what takes my attention. Um, and yeah, that's what I would do to try and bring it up a level. But that having been said, I, every time I look at this, I'm like, the grade on this is fire. I love it. The colours are so nice. They're like soft yet contrasty, which I think is like a, um, it's a hard thing to achieve, but you've managed to do it well. Um, I love the browns. I love that the collar is the same as the leggings. I love that she's obviously in a white top, white dog. And yeah, it it flows together quite nicely, the, the edit. Um, but yeah, those are, those are my thoughts. Beautiful photo. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for sending it in. So now we've got this beautiful um, photo from Leighton Phillips. Um, it's obviously some interesting leaf that's been caught here in the, um, this rail. You've got these leaves in the distance. We can see that there's obviously a whole bunch of leaves in the background. And I, I find this really interesting. The fact that you can see so much detail in this leaf. Um, it's fantastic it's yeah interesting to um see a leaf from in that much detail that much resolution like obviously you can bring a leaf closer to your face but it's a bit different being able to zoom in and really see it um so i think that that's yeah really interesting i love the depth you've got going on here with obviously these lines and then everything in the background being blurry um and i think that this may be one of my biases popping in here um, but I find that, so this is clearly shot on a very shallow depth of field. I think that for this photo it works, but it, I don't know, I find that a shallow depth of field, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just trying to find something to critique here, but I like photos where you can tell slightly more what's going on in the background and where everything else is like, placed because all of this at the front is very well composed completely like well done um but it's like in the background if maybe we were higher up and we saw all of these leaves in the background and the shape because there's kind of like a curve here would maybe placing this leaf in the curve that's going on here would that add more depth would that show um that you are playing in you know, like multiple levels of um depth I keep saying depth um in the composition versus just blurring it out that would maybe take it to the next level um but yeah i love the grade i think that it's probably slightly more sharpened than what i typically like to shoot but for this when you're looking at the detail i think that that works very well um so yeah dude it's simple, yeah, creative, and uh, yeah, good photo, man. Okay, so that is the end of reviewing those photos. That took slightly longer than I anticipated, so I appreciate your patience in getting this far into the video. Um, so, my top three. It's, it's hard because a lot of them are interesting in different ways. Um, so, I think number three, I'm going to go with... Okay, so number three, I'm gonna go with this photo from Alex. I think that the colors are just beautiful. I feel like I wanna be there. And yeah, there's, it just feels very nice. And I think that whilst there isn't like a specific subject there to um, really capture and pull you in, I think that that just feels peaceful beautiful so that, that that's wonderful and so number two is this shot from Bjorn probably the cropped in version as opposed to the wider one um, because yeah I think that it's a really interesting scene there's a lot of contrast going on there's a lot of silhouetting there's a very clear subject and it's an interesting story um, so that to me is number two I think that it is yeah fantastic work so keep it up and the winner here is 
Henry's photo. It, yeah, I was really, really struggling to say anything as a critique to it because yeah, it's so beautiful. There's so much, um, yeah, light on dark, dark on light. The scenery is absolutely fantastic. Um, I guess it's slightly easier if you go to these beautiful locations to be able to shoot something so incredible and vast. But I mean, that is just absolute fire. I can't stop looking at it. So Henry, you win. Um, yeah, we can text him a WhatsApp, maybe get a prize. I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe you get a coffee from me. Maybe that could be the prize. Um, but yeah, absolutely beautiful image. And yeah, thank you everyone for hanging on for being part of this. This has been uh, very eye-opening and hopefully valuable to you. I, yeah, I think that there's a lot of potential here in the community. All of you, thank you so much for submitting. Uh, it's been a pleasure to review and hopefully this has been valuable and interesting to you. If it has, like it, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, and until next time, peace.